Hello, I'm Rachel Adams. And I'm Pat Thornton. And Rachel and I have known each other for quite a while, haven't we, Rachel? Yes, we um, have. And during lockdown, it's been just really important to have artist friends, you know, who, who you can ring up or or exchange news on what we're up to on Instagram or, or just talk to, and uh, even remotely. And uh, uh, yes, we, we, we decided, didn't we? We've both been working over the whole lockdown period, um, but I had found it difficult to begin with to, to produce work, you know, it was a bit, um, and I found it particularly difficult to do like a long term project or a very big painting. Um, and I was walking my dog every day and, you know, through February, March, when there seemed to be no glimmer of, well, February anyway, no glimmer of spring. But the one thing there was were all the birds in, in the floodplains that I walk on. Um, loads of seagulls, like having a bath in the ponds on the grass, and crows, loads and loads of crows that on my approach would fly up and, and then land again a little bit further away and then jostle and then fly up again. And, uh, and, and you know, the place was just so alive with wildlife and and then when I went to the stream um, there was the moor hen and uh, mallard ducks and everything and that's what kept me going really through the dark mornings yeah. of winter. It was a long long it was so long. winter wasn't yeah. it? Yeah and then and then I, it came to me that what I needed to do was small paintings one a day that I could do set myself a task to complete in one day. And that seemed really manageable, whereas any long-term project seemed to be impossible. And because I'd always change my mind or do I, I just it's, liked the I single day say project. That, that, but previously, I mean you'd been working, I think about last summer, last spring. Lockdown didn't have that effect then did it because you were working no, it didn't. on it didn't because it, pictures, I suppose yeah, I was I was working on all my big cow pictures which were really quite big um well, a couple of them were really big um but I I think it was because it was spring whereas um, the winter just seemed so long yeah yeah um, no I had the, the same experience is that um from sort of really from December Christmas didn't seem yeah. to have the same, <laughs> the same <laughs> you know, it's, it, it just seemed like a long, long winter. And, yeah. um, and, and what's really... Routine seemed to be really important, didn't it? What, routines, what did? routines. Yes, routines. Yeah, yeah. So my well, dog it's, walking it's, and <clears throat> crow I was going to say, it's funny you should say that, that because, because as you know, um, Stanley died last summer, my dog. Yeah. And um, so... I I imagined that I'd carry on going out for a walk every day, but without a little face by the back door kind of, you know, demanding it, turned out that I didn't and I don't. But what I've what I've I took to, which I've always done, but um, you know, come down in the morning, make a cup of tea, go back up to bed. And because of where I live and the the view and what I have immediately outside the house. I'd be sitting in bed with a cup of tea, looking out at that view, which you can't see, but I've just got the trees opposite, the spinney and the rookery. And just as you described, February time, when the winter seemed at its absolute bleakest and gloomiest, that's when the rooks started, um, you know, they returned back to the spinney opposite and they go through that mad three or four weeks of um, of making that racket, of building nests, dismantling nests. Um, you know, the activity of them became my kind of morning yeah. door. So as you were walking the floodplains outside Lewis, I'm up here sort of, you know, on the edges, 
just watching and you're right that draw that morning kind of draw to the sort of natural activity don't know what it was but it was it became it became a sort of little fixture yeah a little daily fixture didn't it yes and uh and and again <clears throat> um completing one small painting every day seemed also to help in that routine you know did, it, did um, you spend long on it did you was it like a sort of you know a kind of well not all day no. or? i would spend about um uh two and a half three hours sometimes i do two <clears throat> and sometimes i do spend two hours doing one and um wipe it off <laughs> and do another one in 20 minutes um <clears throat> And uh, so there was a bit of that going on, but on average, it was like one a day, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So a, a sort of an activity, a bit like nest building or something, Pat, yes. a kind of odd, yeah. a, a little activity that um, actually was a bit, wasn't it? It is a bit, I mean, you know, that sort of doing something that, um, that you then dismantle again and then rebuild again. Yeah, yes. And then yes, and yeah, do that's again. The nest building process, yes. Um, it was the it was the coming to the end of the day and um, having achieved one small thing um, for that day. It was the it was the the fact that you I don't know how many you did in the end 25, 26 more. I did about um, <clears throat> well I I kind of had abandoned a few but it was about twenty two I suppose in the end yeah right. Because it was by, by putting them together and placing them at sort of, you know, different parts of the wall and stuff that 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 they become more than just, you know, a small painting of a bird. You 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 were building a rookery, you know, you're building a yes. and the sight of these paintings, some of them um a bird on the floor, sometimes a bird in flight. In, in they, the, yeah. You start to hear them and the 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 racket and the squawk and, and so on. And that kind of um that's you know all those other sensory, you know they kind collectively they collectively mm. they became a big painting, um, and if you include the wall, if you like, and yeah, and then you yeah. came up with all those uh, wonderful words, didn't you? All the wonderful collective uh, nouns what did you about the crow or the rook, and and so I just I just googled it, I didn't realise that they're kind of known as corvids. And then, um, but that set us all off, you know, when when uh, when Robert and Jack and Gretchen kind of, you know, joined in and that, we, you know, it was a sort of, you know, call out to each other to sort of, you know, think about birds. But it was it was the it was the COVID thing and the the realization you know it's so close to covid i mean there's, there's one letter yeah one letter and it's but that seemed to have an effect on all of us i but think subliminally we'd all, kind of, we'd all clock that subliminally haven't yeah, we yeah. i think you know but, the, yes. but how odd that when we started to put our work together and Robert, who, who's, you know, for anyone who knows, you know, lives in the house next door. So he's got the same experience of, of, of the rookery opposite. But by just sort of inky chance, because he works in his sketchbooks every day with, you know, with brush and ink. And, um, you know, often drawing, you know, what he sees in front of him. But he'd by just some, you know, subliminal, spontaneous reason, you know, he'd he'd made the plague doctor drawings amongst them all. Mm. And mm -hmm. it, it's, you know, it just it I don't know, it set us off without that we could concentrate on on examining a bird. But the, the flavour of, of the combination of it all and of our work coming together, it had that sense, that, that feeling of, um, I don't know, of being... The synchronicity, you know, that we'd all um, uh, warmed to this mm. theme so, mm. so much, yes. Um, and, uh, and again, you know, because we've been zooming and 
Instagramming and everything, we realized that we could get all our work together. Um, yeah, yeah. Simultaneously, yeah. Somehow. Oh, that was, that seemed, yeah, it was, yeah. I loved that bit. But it was the, I, you know, what, what really surprised me you know, because we could have just <laughs> essentially had a show, a kind of natural history show, you know, here are our bird, yeah, yeah. Know, our bird observations. But I don't know, you know, Robert's, you know, black, dark, you know, drawings, yours with all that sort of flap and stuff. And I'd gone out with my, um, you know, with my recorder. And, yes, um, yes, yes. And was just... And then that... You know, that that the word connection, you know, once Absolutely. we started looking at all those um, collective nouns of the murder of crows and the storytelling of rook, a uh, storytelling of rooks, and then Gretchen, of course, came up with her wonderful compilations of word yeah. forms and sounds. Yeah, yeah, and and Jack, you know, yeah. with her with her woman squawking yes, minority yes. and um and it's like it's like you know everything you know the sort of you know the me too stuff the 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 virus the pandemic you know and then and and, and I the more I recorded um the rookery opposite the more I would visualize Hitchcock's the birds you know and <laughs> and and it was it was as if it's as if they were were they were symbolic yeah. of of us being, you know, we were under threat. You yeah. know, we were we were confined to quarters. We were we were shut indoors. You know, with these birds and yet, kind of. And yet, they're very social beings, aren't they? I mean, to some extent, I think you know all that the, the way they communicate together and respond collectively and do things. They're very social. These these corvids. And um, uh, and I think that it kind of created um, one could still feel connected by watching these creatures respond mm. to one another. Mm. Um, so that that was that was great. I mean, it's funny because I'm looking up there now because they're obviously they've all you know I should think they're they're all sitting on eggs now you know they've, yeah. they've built their nests yeah. they're they they've stopped. Um, you know that behavior has changed completely and and spring has sprung and um and it's like yeah it's it's um, and as of yesterday we're kind of lockdown restrictions have eased a little bit you know yeah. we're allowed to meet outside and it's yeah they are um they were a good they were a good metaphor certainly for what we mm. what we were experiencing when actually as you said you know we were just we were just responding to what was outside of our, our windows or you and know, you what think, we were seeing on our dog walks or yes and I, I think I felt very much that um, they were helping me through you know um, mm. Mm. Uh, kind of until and yet so I thought to myself well I've done that project now I've done my 20 crows I'm a bit sick of them now I've done enough <laughs> but <clears throat> I've sold a few and I'm kind of missing them. And um, and I found myself still doing a few more and thinking, well, where does this go on to? Do I stop doing them? Do I put them aside? Do I go back to, like, it's the go back to normal phrase, which um, I don't, none of us can, because like life moves no. on. No. And I keep on thinking, well, I, could I do really big ones or, um, you know, bigger than life size ones? Um, so I'm, I'm kind of letting myself uh, go with them and that's a good, take them somewhere. I was going to say that's a good point because, I mean, I've got two of your crows here on the, on the <laughs> wall. And, um, yeah. But yeah, they are, they are smaller than, just a little bit smaller than life size, aren't they? They're, it's yes, just they're looking well, they're, at them. if you saw them at a yes, distance, they're just they would there. tolerate you. They're about yes. that size, yes. yes. So, yeah, no, scale would be, yeah, that would be. I don't know whether they'd be um, more human if I did them really like big or whether they'd be more scary 
because there's something slightly that they, they are a little bit sort of prehistoric, aren't they? But um, at the same time, they seem to have such unique personalities. I mean, because needless to say, I haven't been able to use my own photography to re as reference entirely. I have some, but um, and I've had to use <clears throat> internet, you know, to 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 grab hold of um, and some some video and create my own stills um, to make as reference. And they're all so different. They they really have seem to have personalities. Um, yeah. So I see a correlation between the human and the animal really closely. Yeah. You know, yeah. Really no, yeah, you're right. They're, they're, <laughs> they are characters. Yeah. And I think I told you about how watching them when they're when they're nest building, you know, they they, they work. You know, one one remains in the nest. You know, one goes off to look for twigs, which they'd they'd get from right outside mine. And um, you know, they'd work really, you know, cleverly together. But occasionally, they'd both leave the nest to go off looking for twigs, and then one from the other nests would come and nick bits. And you know, and you and you sort of you watch, thinking, ah, oh, that's so cheeky. You know, so um. <laughs> It's, you know, they are really, they are so watchable, aren't they? Yeah, well, they're so clever, aren't they? Yeah. So I suppose they're clever yeah. and they're devious and, um, but they're, they're, they're loyal and they're tribal and they've probably got an awful lot of similar qualities to us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, the, yeah, the nests themselves, the, um, you know, these enormous kind of, twig things and when the when the wind hits the spinny opposite sometimes you know the tops of the trees are kind of really yeah. you know and you think how, how are they how are they you know how are they safe and secure up there but somehow yeah their nests do you feel do you feel that this project of recording the rooks um leads you on to to the next piece Absolutely, because I thought that, um, I mean, I, at first, you know, I can't, I can't say why, why, Rachel, don't know, why would I go out and just, you know, I just think, oh, I must record this, you know, that, that, that's the, 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 the only thought is that I want to, I want to, oh, to it. grab it, to grab it, yeah, just, I mean, I that's, that's all, and just it's like a, a, and it's a painting, you know, it's, yeah. uh, and the, the last few years as I've been kind of, you know, interested more and more in the sound. I don't know. It's um, it's I capture it, listen to it back. Like if you listen the eve in in the evening, it's very it's very interesting hearing that racket of the rookery in the evening because you 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 somehow intuitively know that this this is out of time. This sound. This is a this is a daytime sound. You know. It's um, but then. I don't know. Are you? I just I'd listen back to the sound and and just find myself layering other bits of audio in with it. And you mm -hmm. your your ear starts to hear these kind of rhythms and boisterousness and yeah. and calm and and I I you know I I can't explain why it, in exactly the same way as you know painting you know you sort of you set off thinking yeah, you forget actually. i'm going to paint there's something of, there's a lot of background um sound um and on seasonal kind of sound like i don't know if you can hear it right now but my neighbors my little girls and boys oh, do you know what i can just see every now and again the light hits you can just see someone playing football at the top yeah, of the back yeah. garden and uh my summer painting is is always accompanied with the soundtrack of um, the bouncing on their yeah. trampoline and their chatter, and um, and and sometimes when they have the pool out in 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 really warm weather, there's this wonderful splashing, um, which is um, actually when I'm sweating away, you know, with <clears throat> feeling very hot and bothered, the sound of yeah, flashing yeah. It actually keeps me going for a good bit longer than I would otherwise manage. Yeah. See, I, lo I love, I love it. I love the fact that um, I'm 
the time and place in a in a picture or in a in a recording or something is seems seems significant to me that that mm-hmm. I have a sense of the sense of the time of and, and of the place you know and and I've yeah. certainly learned that by you know I'll record I think I'm just recording the rooks then I play it back with lots of volume and um and 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 there's a whole narrative like the the one that I the recording I did for the show um towards the end of it you hear um you hear because I've only got a little road out the front here but you you hear and I was totally unaware of it when I was recording but you hear a van come round and and stop just just up the road and then you hear someone get out of the cab and the door shut and then you hear them um presumably opening the back of the truck (laughs) and then you hear a door knock and you just know that someone's Amazon delivery has just arrived Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. um that kind of that's what I mean about time and place that that it's the rooks sound you know they they sound of this of this area of this geographically Mm -hmm. of this place the sound of that of that van and and you know it's it's weird it's not it's not a kind of milk delivery in the 1970s. Mm. It's, it's, it just seems, you know, it's just, you just yes, know it's, it's a, a parcel. It's a very contemporary sound, isn't it? Isn't it? And it's, again, it's all of that, you know, the COVID aspect of, of, mm. of being indoors and, and, you know, and the world having to come to us by mm. delivery and this racket going on. And um, yeah, layers, layers of, of information tucked in mm. there. Um, and it feels like, you know, as ever, we're, you know, there's a sense of investigator, isn't there? That if I can just, if I can just pin this down, I'll know, I'll know what, you know, I'm collecting all this evidence and, and um, it will become clear. Hmm. And the funny thing is, is the show itself, you know, the, the, the nature books that we put into the vitrine, the the way that you um, you presented the the rooks, you know, one up there and one over there and right in the corner and a cluster, um, a cluster it, on the floor. Yeah, and it's it's like um, you know that combination. It felt to me very much that of this time. Yeah. Yes, yes. No, I think we'll uh, um, always, always remember. It'll, it'll be, it'll take us back complete in a moment, won't it? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, looking forward again, I like to think also that um, uh, it's given us stuff to, to put, you know, take on to the next stage. Well, in our usual fashion, one or the other of us will um, have an overwhelming yeah. sense to, to, you know, share, you know, a word or a phrase with the others, and and it will it will set us all off again. And yeah. and and I'm I'm guessing as ever, <laughs> the time and the place will somehow emerge out of that theme um, yeah. without us, you know even trying yes 